International researchers at CERN, the European Laboratory for Particle Physics, are searching for this field that extends throughout all things. But instead of looking within, they look to the outer physical world. Researchers at the CERN Laboratory in Geneva, Switzerland, announced that they had found the Higgs boson, or the God particle. The Higgs boson experiments prove scientifically that an invisible energy field fills the vacuum of space. CERN's Large Hadron Collider consists of a ring 17 miles in circumference, in which two beams of particles race in opposite directions, converging and smashing together at nearly the speed of light. Scientists observe what comes out of the violent collisions. The standard model cannot account for how particles get their mass. Everything appears to be made of vibration, but there is no thing being vibrated. It is as if there has been an invisible dancer, a shadow, dancing hidden in the ballet of the universe. All the other dancers have always danced around this hidden dancer. We have observed the choreography of the dance, but until now we could not see that dancer. The so-called God particle, the properties of the base material of universe, the heart of all matter which would account for the unexplained mass and energy that drives the universe's expansion. But far from explaining the nature of the universe, the discovery of the Higgs boson simply presents an even greater mystery, revealing a universe that is more mysterious than we ever imagined. Science is approaching the threshold between consciousness and matter. The eye with which we look at the primordial field and the eye with which the field looks at us are one and the same. The German writer and luminary Wolfgang von Goethe said, the wave is the primordial phenomenon which gave rise to the world. Cymatics is the study of visible sound. The word cymatics comes from the Greek root cyma, which means wave or vibration. One of the first Western scientists to seriously study wave phenomena was Ernst Kladny, a German musician and physicist who lived in the 18th century. Kladny discovered that when he spread sand on metal plates and then vibrated the plates with a violin bow, the sand arranged itself into patterns. Different geometrical forms appeared depending on the vibration produced. Kladny recorded an entire catalog of these shapes, and they are referred to as Kladny figures. Many of these patterns can be found throughout the natural world, such as the markings of the tortoise, or the spot patterns of a leopard. Studying Kladny patterns or cymatic patterns is one secret way in which high-end guitar, violin, and other instrument makers determine the sound qualities of the instruments they make. Hans Jenny expanded on Kladny's work in the 1960s, using various fluids and electronic amplification to generate sound frequencies and coined the term cymatics. If you run simple sine waves through a dish of water, you can see patterns in the water. Depending on the frequency of the wave, different ripple patterns will appear. The higher the frequency, the more complex the pattern. These forms are repeatable, not random. The more you observe, the more you start to see how vibration arranges matter into complex forms from simple repeating waves. 
This water vibration has a pattern similar to a sunflower. Simply by changing the sound frequency, we get a different pattern. Water is a very mysterious substance. It is highly impressionable. That is, it can receive and hold on to vibration. Because of its high resonance capacity and sensitivity, and an inner readiness to resonate, the water responds instantaneously to all types of sonic waves. Vibrating water and earth make up the majority of mass in plants and animals. It is easy to observe how simple vibrations in water can create recognizable natural patterns. But as we add solids, and increase the amplitude, things get even more interesting. Adding cornstarch to water, we get more complex phenomena. Perhaps the principles of life itself can be observed as vibrations move the cornstarch blob into what appears to be a moving organism. The animating principle of the universe is described in every major religion using words that reflect the understanding of that time in history. In the language of the Incas, the largest empire in pre-Columbian America. The word for human body is Alpa Kamaska, which means literally, animated earth. In Kabbalah, or Jewish mysticism, they talk about the divine name of God, the name that cannot be spoken. It cannot be spoken because it is a vibration that is everywhere. It is all words, all matter. Everything is the sacred word. The tetrahedron is the simplest shape that can exist in three dimensions. Something must have at least four points to have physical reality. The triangle structure is nature's only self-stabilizing pattern. In the Old Testament, the word tetragrammaton was often used to represent a certain manifestation of God. It was used when talking about the word of God, or the special name of God, logos or primordial word. The ancient civilizations knew that at the root structure of the universe was the tetrahedral shape. Out of this shape, nature exhibits a fundamental drive toward equilibrium, Shiva, while it also has a fundamental drive towards change, Shakti. In the Bible, the Gospel of John usually reads, In the beginning was the Word, but in the original text, the term used was Logos. The Greek philosopher Heraclitus, who lived around 500 years before Christ, referred to the Logos as something fundamentally unknowable, the origin of all repetition, pattern and form. The Stoic philosophers who followed the teachings of Heraclitus identified the term with the divine animating principle pervading the universe. In Sufism, the Logos is everywhere, and in all things. It is that out of which the unmanifest becomes manifest. In the Hindu tradition, Shiva Nataraja literally means Lord of the Dance. The whole cosmos dances to Shiva's drum. All is imbued, 
or ensouled with the pulsation. Only as long as Shiva is dancing can the world continue to evolve and change. Otherwise, it collapses back into nothingness. While Shiva is representative of our witnessing consciousness, Shakti is the substance or stuff of the world. While Shiva lies in meditation, Shakti tries to move him, to bring him into the dance. Like yin and yang, the dancer and the dance exist as one. Logos also means unconcealed truth. He who knows the Logos knows the truth. Many layers of concealment exist in the human world as Akasha has been swirled into complex structures concealing the source from itself like a divine game of hide and seek. We have been hiding for thousands of years eventually forgetting about the game completely. We somehow forgot that there was anything to find. In Buddhism, one is taught to directly perceive the Logos, the field of change or impermanence within oneself through meditation. When you observe your inner world, you observe subtler and subtler sensations and energies as the mind becomes more concentrated and focused. Through the direct realization of anicca or impermanence at the root level of sensation, one becomes free of attachment to transient external forms. Once we realize there is one vibratory field that is the common root of all religions, how can we say my religion or this is my primordial ohm, my quantum field? 